Hello and welcome to another edition of ISG Smart Talks, the podcast where we talk about the way technology is transforming business with the objectives of educating, inspiring and of course entertaining our listeners. Today we're going to talk about a, a, a topic which I find really interesting, how the RPA world is, is developing and maturing before our eyes and how we can orchestrate different types of technology to achieve much more strategic transformation. I used to call this robotic process orchestration or RPO. I believe it's now called service orchestration and we're going to find out a little bit more about that because I'm delighted that we have Kit Cox, who's Chief Executive Officer, CEO of Innate with us. So good morning. Good morning, Barry. Thank you. to see you. Yeah, thank you ever so much for, for joining us. So rather than me doing a terrible job of second hand of trying to introduce you, and we've known each other for quite a long time, um, so I could probably do an okay job, but <laughs> I'm sure you, could. you would do a much, much better job of in- introducing yourself. So <laughs> who are you? And tell us a little about yourself and Innate. So uh, I'm Kit Cox. I'm CEO of Innate. Innate's service orchestration software company. So we built a platform for managing people and bots as part of one workforce. Yeah. and dealing with the problems that you get as you kind of change the blend of that workforce over time. And so my background is I'm a manufacturing engineer by education and first jobs. I'm a software developer by hobby and then career. Yeah. Uh, and then I you know, stumbled into this life of being an entrepreneur and uh, and, and running you know, and, take, and taking the business on, on yeah. the journey through a few lives different iterations so when did when was innate formed so we founded the business in 2000 right yeah and for a long time yeah we, we found it as a bespoke software company so yeah. we yeah we just me and a few of the other guys built bits of bespoke software but we ended up doing most of that development for bpo vendors yeah so we we kind of got to a point 2010, 2011, where we went, actually, we've got enough stuff that we can make a product out of this. And, yeah. uh, so that's when we said, right, we'll, we'll productize this and, and go sell it, you know, go and sell a product to help BPO vendors right. run their operations. And that was to sort of to automate or to manage manage the, the BPO, the, uh, the, the I suppose the outsourcing process, right? Or, yeah. or to manage what, what, what BPO providers did for their clients, right? Yeah, manage the service delivery. Model. Yeah. Yeah, right. uh, manage, manage the service delivery resources and and, and, and environment. So, yeah, uh, you know, that that kind of yeah, how do, how does a BPO vendor get stuff done against yeah. SLA in the most efficient way possible? Yeah, and and does does your software still do that? Because obviously you've pivoted towards this new world of, of automation and managing, you know, orchestrating man and machine. But um, do you still provide services to BPO providers? So we do still sell to BPO providers. But actually, it's much more now in the help us you know, in 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 the product that we've built post yeah. pivot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so twenty fourteen was when we, to be honest, had our oh crap moment. Yeah, yeah, your epiphany. Uh, yeah, of that was when I first saw Blue Prism. Yes, yeah. that's what you saw in twenty fourteen. If somebody showed you RPA. Yeah. Uh, and my take on what that was: Wow, this is going to yeah. Eviscerate yeah. the BPO industry. Yeah, brilliantly simple and simply yeah. brilliant. That's yeah. what we thought. Uh, and so, you know, therefore, having a product to sell to BPO vendors not all that smart. Yeah. Uh, so, so that we, we stood right back and, and said, "Well, what, what are we going to do next then?" Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the thought process was, but right now we see our customers having enough problems delivering services and managing services with an entirely human workforce. Yeah. Now, what are all the other problems that they might get when they start bringing, well, they weren't called digital workers at the time, but when they start bringing bots into that environment. Yeah. Yeah. And then potentially when those bots start coming from different vendors with different skills. Yeah. Yeah. Where they're, they're not just doing, you know, the, you know, the, the, you know, the click bot activity where yeah. they're doing more natural language or rules engine or yeah. Yeah. Uh, those kind of things. And that's what we set out to, to build the platform to solve for. 
Yeah. 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 So, so we brought forward some of the intellectual po- property from what we were doing before, you know, because ultimately you still have a problem that is, I've got a bunch of resources now, some of which yeah. are carbon based and some of which are silicon based. I love this carbon yeah. based. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As, as, as we are. It's, it's, that seems to have that seems to have taken off as a. Yeah. I started using that a couple of years ago. That seems to have landed as a phrase in the, people, in the market. In other words. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So pe- pe- people, people, and 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 digital workers. Yeah. Yeah. But you've still got this problem of you have a workforce. You have a bunch of demand that that workforce has to deliver against. Yeah. And you have to solve for getting the right work to the right resource at the right time to yeah. give the customer the best service they can get. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so that's that. So so some of the the IP around that yeah. we brought forward, but the probably the biggest thing that we kind of realised and yeah, as part of that pivot was we got to make it blooming simple for people to yeah. to work with and what to be honest what started as a marketing tagline you know? yeah. so yeah so we you know created this tagline of simplified service automation yeah but what starts as a tagline actually then became a has become almost a religion in the in mm. this simple has become what we do yeah and it's become what we do in how the product works yeah in how we talk to people about it yeah in how we price, yeah. in, it's something we can turn back on ourselves in every single part yeah. of uh, of what we do, and it's been it's been really interesting how that culture has now pervaded yeah. into the business. Yeah. yeah. Um. So just to bring it to life for some of our listeners who might not be that yeah. familiar with RPA, now my my um, simple way of trying to explain what I what I believe the, the product does is if you imagine like a a cooking pot full of different ingredients and you've got some blue prism and automation anywhere or UI path and you might have all three. Yeah. You've also then potentially got some IBM Watson, you might have some, you know, Oracle, ERP that you're working you've with. You've probably got, got some got Excel. Some, yeah. You might have there's a whole host of different technologies. And what your service orchestration tool enables the client to do is to understand the sort of handoffs, the efficiencies between those different tools who are which are carrying out sub processes yeah. so you can see the bigger picture you can actually see the entire end to end process some of it being done by hand some of it doing done by machines now how if you're working in those different technologies in those applications how does your tool track that step by step process end to end so so we track it at so the the way that we talk to people is that you know the orchestration platform doesn't have to be ours. Yeah. Yeah. But the orchestration platform is about managing what resource does what when. Right. Yeah. But we don't get into how. And that's all workflow. So that that's essentially that's essentially workflow, but it's a workflow at a level where you are just dealing at that level. If you look back to lots here, so look back to the BPM kind of world. Yeah. 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 The essence of that we're very much about how does this process work? Yeah. yeah. How, yeah. What are all the rules that we implement? Yeah. With? What is the data set that we, we manage yeah. with it? Yeah. And actually, that's that's not where we need to be now. Yeah. yeah. You know, we need that's, to be yeah. this much simpler layer. You don't really care, right? I mean, that's, exactly. Yeah. Most businesses yeah. don't care about that layer. Yeah. 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 So, so the, yeah, the two things that we do is we manage the activity at that what resource does what when yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. Which can be, you know, can be in a in a flowing flowing kind of way, you know. Yeah. So, so you know, Barry Matthews does something, and that hands across to, you know, mm-hmm. you know then hands that on to UiPath bot that does the next thing, which hands yeah. it on to, you know, yeah, Watson Writer to go and yeah, send, yeah. send out send out a seemingly handcrafted magic letter, yeah, yeah. Or it can be where the the structure is much more of a Gantt chart. Kind yeah. of structure, yeah. or, or is much more flexible. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know things like month, month end close, they don't fit into you know, flowing kind of process structures. Yeah. Stuff just has to happen, and there's a bit of order in it, but yeah. it's mostly a blooming long list of stuff that has to happen. Yeah. with Some dates that's got to be done by. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and there are other, you know, there are other types of uh, of process and case model where it's much more subtle and flexible, and actually, you want to leave it to either some real intelligence yeah. a person yeah. to make the calls about okay what are we going to do next around delivering this service to this customer yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and we can work in all of those models yeah but then then the handoff between 
you know, the human and digital worker, yeah, and the and the control of yeah. the activity across the customer journey, yeah, that's what we then take care of. Right. It's like a the the vision I have in my head is like this control tower across a factory monitoring all the different things that are that are happening but it's all in the it's virtual and you can't see it but it's basically tracking everything yeah I'm, I'm, we've we've got this this analogy which uh <clears throat> which we say well, look think of the last industrial revolution yeah to figure out how this one's going to pan out yeah so so imagine a manufacturing environment it's pretty yeah. easy for me so I'm used to work yeah yeah Imagine a manufacturing environment where you've got a production line, and on that production line, you've got a mixture of machines. Yeah. Note those machines almost certainly come from different vendors. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got people working on that manufacturing line. Yeah. And the people are wearing white overalls, and their managers occasionally come down and talk to them, and you know, make yeah. you know, make some some flow decisions, and their managers are also wearing white overalls. Yeah. Yeah. And then when one of the machines breaks, somebody wearing blue overalls <laughs> comes and fixes the machine. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, bring that forward into the services world. Yeah, we live in today. Then, yeah, Innate is a platform for the people wearing white overalls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so the people doing the delivery of service and their management, who are ultimately interested in the overall delivery of the service yeah. from end to end. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the the tool vendors, the bot vendors. Yeah, yeah. Or the yeah AI vendors or the cognitive <clears throat> vendors. Yeah, they've got platforms for the guys with blue overalls and. That's you know that's the way that we kind of pitch that into yeah, the, yeah. into the world yeah, that no, we're no, working into a, now. That's a good that's a, a good analogy. I, I like it. And I know, in fact, you've used um you used Lego Smart Play to sort of bring it to life, haven't you? With yeah. different coloured bricks and all that, that type of stuff, which I can see would be really effective. Yeah, it's and that's one thing that we found really helpful to to the extent that you know all of our team now carry Lego around. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, as we, we came up with this game to get people thinking about bits of their process and bits of their yeah. business in a different way. Yeah. So it's a game played with Lego and there's one set of rules for it. Yeah. yeah. Which is that the different colours of Lego brick represent different cognitive competencies. Yeah. So you know, they're not a set of competencies we came up with some yeah. Much brighter people than I was at Imperial College came up with this, with yeah. this list. But they're things like, <clears throat> are you using your ability to empathise yeah. with someone? Are you using your ability to uh, read and understand long form text? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Are you using yeah. your ability to uh, to just follow rules? Yeah. And type. Yeah. 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 So each of those uh, you know, each of those competencies is a different colour of brick. So then you get people to build a process that they understand that have those competencies. Yeah. 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 And sure enough, you, you, you get processes. You've got a mixture of all of them, yeah, because you know, one of the fabulous things about humans is we're extraordinarily flexible. Yeah, yeah, and we can do all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we can do all of them to a pretty pretty high degree. But with it, there are a whole bunch of these thing, points that you can bring across. So the first and most obvious one is right. When you've got exec saying, "Well, what are we doing about AI?" Yeah, yeah, and you say, "Right." Look at all these different colors of Lego brick. Every single one of those colors of Lego brick is something that you could automate, but you will automate with a different technology that will be available from a different vendor yeah. and will be relevant to your business at a different time. Yeah. And every single one of them gets called AI. Yeah. Yeah. AI is not a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. not a thing. It is it is hundreds of different things. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. That get bundled onto this under this banner, yes, yes. but they're so different yeah. that we shouldn't talk about it as a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it is right to say, okay, what are we doing with with machine learning in in this? In, yeah, two two spot patterns in this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What yeah. are we doing with natural language processing in this part? Yeah. Of so no, it's a, it's a good way of bringing it bringing it all to life. I think something you said there, and I, I feel passionately about how we as as humans really need to focus on our creativity, our humanity, yeah. our empathy, and all of these human qualities because we we know more and more of the rules based processing, your whatever colour bricks they will be in your in your Lego analogy, will inevitably be done by some form of technology. And so we have to develop those innate skills, <laughs> qualities that, that we have, characteristics as humans to be able to stand apart from machines and to work as part of this 
carbon and, and digital workforce. And I always wonder whether organisations are doing enough to emphasise those characteristics. We have them innately, yeah. Yeah, obviously, but how do you develop them for somebody who was working in accounts payable and now is, needs to be able to do something else to, to, to stay ahead of the robots? Um, I wonder whether organisations are focusing on that type of development enough. As a rule of thumb, I'd say no, they're not, because mm. uh, most organisations are you know, just in the weeds of you know, day-to-day, how do we yeah. get, yeah. it's not living hand to mouth, but it's, you know, how do we, yeah, how do we get through this quarter, this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this immediate cycle, and actually that kind of learning and real transformative changes is something that, that you can only plan for and think about over you know, numbers of years. Yeah. Yeah. I think where we've seen some of the best stories coming about are, uh, are where, where we've seen you know, through a mixture of you know, RPA and orchestration yeah. and, and creating capacity. Where that capacity is in a middle office or front office environment, something, mm. that's, something that is touching the revenue generating part of the business. Yeah. 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 Uh, so we've got some lovely examples from insurance companies with, with this. Uh, where all of the you know, you know, they automated stuff and all of the classical metrics that you might use around uh, you know middle office and front office performance you know like average handling times and stuff yeah like yeah, yeah processes yeah so like average average handling times yeah. went up people were spending longer on the phone with customers but then there were other things that went up as well so employee satisfaction went up compliments went up. In fact, compliments weren't a, weren't a measurable quantity in, in one of these environments yeah. before. Like, yeah, <laughs> it didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, complaints was a measurable quantity. Yeah. They, they, and <laughs> they reduced yeah. to zero, but compliments was not a measurable quantity. Yeah. They went up. And actually, and then revenue starts going. Yeah, well, it's cust- yeah. customer stickiness and, and, and value per you customer. Do more, and, yeah. You do more business. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was with, yeah, that was with the same people where, so things like overtime had been, Mm. cut to zero yeah yeah but it was with the same people in there and they were doing similar they were doing similar jobs but they were just given the ability to spend more time doing those yeah 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 and spend more time doing yeah just just doing the stuff that yeah. you know you and i can have a yeah. pretty good conversation most people are pretty competent at having a pretty yeah. good conversation and actually if you're doing that in a in a with people who are you are serving or are going to be your customers then yeah sure enough they do more business with yeah you. exactly uh, i think you're right i think it'll be a, that gradual change gradual mm-hmm. focus on these other more human qualities it will take a, it will take a long time yeah I, I think the challenge for us as leaders of, in, of technology companies in in this sector is mm. is more about how do we help change yeah. the education system you know, I've, you know, I've, I've got kids in second year, primary school and secondary school at the moment. Yeah. And it, I find an increasing source of frustration going, we're teaching these kids to be professionals in the 1990s. Yeah. Uh, and not citizens of the future of work that yeah. is going to be so radically different that, yeah. that politicians... And, and, well, and, and you know, even as alleged experts, I can't tell you what it's going to look like. Yeah, I think anybody that pretends they can is, you know, yeah, is uh, is, oh, yeah, is, is not not completely on it. We, we uh, did a we did an episode on the future of work re- recently. Where we yeah. talked about this, and I I often use this example of you know my children just don't use email. Yeah, and they're both you know one's eighteen and one's twenty, and they're pretty soon I hope be part of the you know a working environment and and earning a earning of their keep but then they'll go into businesses where the predominant application we use to communicate is email yeah. even though we've got all of these other yeah, you yeah. know the, the slacks and yammers and and, and all, all of the other tools we still use email all of the time right it's one of the first things that the applications we have I don't even know you know how to, what how is to that? Write, yeah. why do i have to write yeah. so many words what's the point of that <laughs> but we still carry on do, doing that and I, no, I think you're right the way we educate our kids has definitely got to change and there's so many exciting ways you could use you know augmented reality or virtual reality or different yeah. ways of of educating um, our our children however i think that we still do things in a very yeah. in a very traditional well, way yeah we're focused on cramming yeah information in yeah most education 
you know, is focused on cramming information into people's heads. Yeah. Actually, that is the bit that will be most hollowed out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we should be educating people to, you know, you know, the liberal, you know, yeah, yeah, the, the liberal arts, yeah. as they were classically yeah. called. Yeah. People should spend doing as much time doing drama and dance. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and and product design and tinkering as they've yeah. been doing. Exactly. English and maths and French. Right, yeah, even yeah. more so in this, this world yeah. of, of machines. So um, let me change tack a, a little bit yeah. and just talk about, um, we talked about gradual change, but how about the speed, the exponential rise of the RPA vendors and what's mm. happened? I mean, you and I have been in this industry, you know, let's say even just five or six years and we've seen, yeah. you know, Blue Prism first of all and then UI paths in this meteoric rise, yeah. Automation Anywhere doing exactly the same thing and competing to be the the largest with the UI path, and then all of the others, right? And there are so yeah. many, whether it's, you know, Nice or WorkFusion or, yeah. or, or, or whoever, or Abbey. Or, um, it's just been an incredible ride, hasn't it? And it must have been for you over the last uh, yeah. three or four years. Uh, yeah, it is, it is bonkers. And it is, you know, it's, it's actually a real privilege to be a, yeah. an entrepreneur in this sector, to be honest. Yeah. It's, you know, you go, I can't really realise how lucky I am. Yeah. This doesn't uh, happen very often in a lifetime, right? This type no, of change. No, uh, and and you know you sit down with with Daniel from <clears throat> from from UI Path and you yeah. can't believe it either. Yeah, and and <laughs> I think what's what's been interesting to see about some of the things that have really fascinated me about mm. yeah how that market has moved over time. Uh, one is that uh, you know if if you say yeah probably yeah UI Path and AA are yeah. yeah uh, time yet are uh, in the runoff for first and second <laughs> yeah, yeah now in reality uh, and and you know and BP are probably third in the market and then there's a whole load of others yeah uh, it's been interesting how culture has driven some of that you know uh, mm. you know my, my take on why UiPath have gone so fast is is this idea of Culture, yeah, cu- I, I, they've gone so fast because of culture and community. Yeah, yeah. So democratize yeah. The, the, this yeah. idea of look, we're not the experts. Come and play. Yeah, come and learn. Uh, tell us what we need to do better. There is lots of stuff we need to do better. Yeah, yeah. And you're the only one. Yes, very. You tell us. Very smart uh, strategy. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and the idea that you know, and and we're trying to do this with the you know, so we've just launched our community edition. And trying to understand that community is not about free software. Community is about a community. It means what it says on the tin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's about people coming together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and acting together and, and learning together. So that's one of the things that's been really interesting to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah. The underlying architecture matters. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's that's been proven out now. Um that you know, more solid and open architecture is going to win out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think this this space is going to be driven by an open ecosystem kind of play rather than a closed ecosystem kind of play. Yeah. I think most people, yeah. uh, you know, most old gippers like you and me, uh, have have been through the kind of ERP world and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, yeah, we 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 recognise how people got burned by closed eco ecosystems. Absolutely. Yeah. The yeah, we're we're going to buy everything from yeah. SAP or everything from yeah. Oracle or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then going, oh, actually, not everything they build is brilliant. Mm. <laughs> There's some awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah. But but just going, well, we'd better buy everything. <laughs> some of it doesn't even integrate with each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think everybody's been burnt by that, and because of the technical layer, we've been able to move things on yeah. enough. So that systems do actually interoperate with fairly standard ways with APIs. Now, yeah. Uh, to go, no, you can actually go. We're going to use the right tool for the right job. Yeah. In a reasonably easy kind of way. Yeah. So I sort of um, another analogy has popped into my head now, or a metaphor, or a vision, anyway, of like a football. You're, and I'm seeing Nate like a football manager. You need the guy, the right guy, and this is good because we have Champions League on Saturday night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liverpool, <laughs> Liverpool, Liverpool, Tottenham, and I'm a Tottenham fan. So, but you've got your, you've got Pochettino as the, as the innate, and you're going to pick your Loris in goal, and you're going to have Harry Kane up front, and you're going to have Vertonghen in defence, and then you're going to have Deli Ali in midfield, and you've got all those 
specific experts in their field, but they need to be managed and orchestrated. Yeah. And uh, and so innate is the Potocino yeah. of I, that analogy. I, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> or the clock, obviously. <laughs> so so let's let's move um, move things on a little bit. Uh, there are five questions that I always ask our guests on our ISG yeah. Smart Talks um, podcast. So I'm going to ask them of you. Okay. So the first one is, which technology has had the biggest impact on your career to date and why? Okay. So I think this is going to tell you my age. I think it is uh, the BBC microcomputer. <laughs> uh, we are a similar age. So... <laughs> So, uh, because it's the machine I learned to code on, yeah. uh, and you know that's what's fundamentally driven the direction of my yeah, career is you know, learning to code and being able to code. Yeah. And I think it's it's also got a it's also got an interesting parable maybe uh, mm. to tell us around maybe some of the things that we should be doing around this. Industrial, the the AI driven, the machine learning driven yeah. industrial revolution. If you think about that, it was an education project. Mm. It was a government, yeah, it was a computer that was created through a government driven education project where the UK government said, uh, this thing called computing and personal computing appears to be landing. Yeah. Uh, looks like it's going to change a lot of things. We better do something to get capability yeah. out into their tools. <clears throat> yeah. In in yeah in mass driven by the national broadcaster yeah. to teach people about what it is and how to use it. I didn't know that was the, that was how yeah. it started. I mean, I remember the BBC Micro and the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore sixty four and that, but I never actually associated BBC with BBC. Yeah, yeah, so, that's what that's what it was. And, yeah. and and you can argue we need to yeah. And back to my AI isn't a thing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, and and you've got yeah. You know, people being scared of it, not scared of it, think he's going to take every job, not take every yeah. job. Uh, the way to, you know, the way that we need to deal with that is 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 to educate people with what it is. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and what the different components of it are. Yeah. Yeah. And we could we could yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's the kind of thing that we that, that actually if we're smart, we can do that across a huge yeah, absolutely. Am- amount of the population. Yeah, no, good. I, I, I like that. Good good answer. Um, second question, which technology, in your opinion, promised the most and then delivered the least? <laughs> I think most technologies fall into that. <laughs> at least at certain <laughs> point in time, they do. Yeah. Overinflated um, expectations. I, it may still have its time, but yeah, blockchain is one of those things that at the moment <laughs> I, I go, you know, I, I don't see, see enough mm. real world need yeah. for distributed sources of trust to go, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's got legs, you know, yeah. it's, I, I just don't get it. It might be that I'm not bright enough to, yeah, but, yeah. but it is, yeah, it's one of the things that goes, I can understand really specific use cases. Yeah, sure. It'll be useful. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But as a general solve everything. Yeah. Is it a solution looking for a problem? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting because we have some guests on this podcast who've, who've used blockchain as yeah. being, you know, the, 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 the technology that's going to be the most disruptive over the next decade, which I'll ask yeah. you in a second. And others who said the same as you, in fact, including myself, I think. Yeah. So um, anyway. Um, okay. Good. Good answer. Um, What's your? I'm into gadgets, as you know, and I've always got the latest gadget. Normal, normally, they gather in dust in my in my man cave at home. Um, but there are occasionally gadgets that actually I find incredibly useful. Not they don't quite transform your life, but you use them all the time. Yeah. Is there a gadget that you use every day that's made a difference? So I, I, I think so. I, I I'm going to challenge the word gadget. So so so. I like things that are extremely useful. I like things that last, yeah. actually. And Can gadgets last? So, well, that's the thing. That, that's the thing. So, so I don't buy lots of bits of yeah. tech dribble, yeah. you know, bit, bits of little little tech gadgetry, because they end up in exactly the same place that yours yeah, exactly, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. But, so, but I, I bought a set of Japanese cooking knives, which I, the thing that I like doing in my spare time is cooking. Yeah. And, and the thing that, I appreciate about them is yeah is how much incredible process 
yeah, all right. and focus yeah. goes into making something very simple, but where everything has been made just yeah, so. Yeah, precisely, yeah. Just so. Mm. And I know they will ask me the rest of my life. <laughs> and they and I use them every day. Good. I, yeah. I think I think that's a I think I'm allowed to let you have that. It's a good answer. Yeah. I feel like I'm on desert, <laughs> desert island discs and you're, you're not only allowed to take a certain, a certain object, but I will, will allow that one to pass through. Um, which, my fourth question, which technology do you think is going to have the most transformational impact on business over the next decade? So I think some different so some some components of the AI, uh, the AI spectrum yeah. will will have <laughs> which which ones do you reckon? Impact. so so a common deployment of machine learning mm. models i think is going to have massive impact and i and i think the parts of that that will be will be biggest is is where people are bringing absolutely laser focused models to market yeah that are solving <clears throat> A very particular business problem that is covered by that is driven by a data set that is from a much wider array of data than any individual organization can get hold of themselves yeah yeah <clears throat> I, I think those will have massive impact and I think natural language yeah. will have another a, a similarly massive impact yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, for me those those, those are the yeah, um, those are the two parts of that spectrum. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't disagree. I think I, I don't throw orchestration there as well, but yeah, that's, that's <laughs> of just course. cynical, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, of course. And so, and then the final question is: um, Has there been anybody in your life so far who's been your technology hero, as yeah. I as I call it, someone who's made a big impact on your on your life from a tech perspective? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's actually Johnny Ive, mm. who you know, for those. I think most people know Johnny Ives, but uh, he's the head of design at Apple. Yeah. yeah so his first product was the iMac, uh, and yeah. he's designed every <coughs> Apple product since, yeah. the, since the first iMac. Uh, yeah. The re- yeah, you know, I was talking about simple becoming a yeah, you know, a, an ethos. Uh, go and watch a video of Johnny Ive explaining how they build the the frame for a for a uh, MacBook Air, yeah, and how some of the manufacturing process means that they they mill some of the metal, yeah. so that an LED light shines through the metal, yeah, so that when the lights off, yeah. you can't even see that there's a light there, yeah, fantastic, yeah. Yeah. and just that absolute focus on them, make it so simple. If some if something's irrelevant at a point in time, yeah. you should you should be able to see it? That. Yeah, I love that too. They took they took that. Same level of, of focus and attention to detail to the Apple stores as well. When yeah. I, I listened to a podcast that would talk about the history of the, the Apple stores and how that and how that worked and the the amount of iterations they went through in terms of the format until everything, the glass stairs, the lighting, the heating, the acoustics, it was just perfect. And I think that attention to detail is so incredibly important and often forgotten in this yeah. fast paced world where we can do things so so quickly. Yeah. So um, thank you very much. Really, really good yeah, sure. um, answers. It's been a delight to uh, to chat to you this morning. So thank you very much for for that. It's so good to see Innate doing so incredibly well and the the um, amazing growth that you that you are seeing at the moment. Right place, right time. Um, so Innate is definitely one for our listeners to um, to watch out for. So Kit, thank you very much. Um, really appreciate you you joining us this morning. Absolute delight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barry. Great to talk to you. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.